Welcome to another video in this building a RESTful service with Node.js series. The last video we added Mongoose and we connected there for our MongoDB database and we worked a lot on the products related routes. In this video, I want to fine tune our setup there a bit, add validation so that only valid data makes it into our database and also come back to these RESTful constraints I showed you earlier in this series because right now our responses we give back from our endpoints here are not really that great. So let's work on both in this video. Let's start by adding validation. Now for that most interesting to us is the post route here where we create new products and there we store an ID which we automatically generate. So nothing to validate here. This will be unique and so on. But we also store a name and a price. And what happens if a user passes, let's say, a string as a price? Well, let's find out. Let's go back to Postman, create a new post request to products. Let's work on the body. And the body now needs to change again, should be a normal JSON object here, where I set the name to something, something awesome. And then I set the price to hello, which doesn't look like a correct price. If I send this and restart my server, which I just did. So if I send this, I do get back an error cast number failed for value hello. So that's great. One important lecture we can already take away. We can't store strings as numbers and so on. This is already something Mongoose checks for us and it correctly throws an error if we try to do so. However, what happens if we don't pass a price, but just pass a name, then we still get back a valid response. And if I now get all my products, you see we created a product without a price. That is not how it should work. So I'll go back to my product model and there where I set the values to string a number, we can also pass an object, which does not mean the type is an object, but now we can provide a more detailed configuration. We can set up a type property here where we can still set this to number. So now we had the same as before, but we can also pass more configuration like for example, we could set required to true here. And this does just what it sounds like. It makes sure that this field is required. If I now save this and I try to send that same post request from before again, I now get an error that path price is required. And this of course makes sense because, well, it is required. I don't want to allow this right access. And the same can be done for the name, of course. Here, I'll now also set this to type string and require this. And if I now send this here, sorry, without setting a name, so let's just set some names property, which doesn't exist. Now, this also fails because price is required and name is required. If I do set a name to something awesome, and if I then do set a price to something awesome, then it succeeds. If I now add a third argument here, like sales price, which I set to 999, and I send this, it also succeeds. And if we get all products, we see that here, nowhere the sales price was saved though. And that makes a lot of sense because if you have a look at our backend, just sending the sales price as an argument to our route doesn't do anything because here we're configuring the product we plan on storing and there we never extract the sales price. We never assign it to a property in our object which is going to get stored. So we can send whichever data we want. We're just making sure that the data we do expect is valid. And this is now the case with the setup we, well, set up here. Now let me quickly clean up that data here by sending a couple of delete requests. So I'll delete this product, which doesn't have a valid price. And thereafter, let me quickly again grab all products. Whoops, without that ID, which correctly failed because we just deleted it. And let me also delete one of these something awesome products here, or if you want, of course, both. 
So let's delete that too. Now that also shows us some other issue I want to work on in this video, the response. Now this is not a good response and it certainly doesn't fulfill the constraints I mentioned earlier in this video series where the responses should be also kind of self-descriptive. So what we want to do is provide better responses. Let's start in the products file here, which is the only file where we really do something with the data. And there, let's take a closer look. I do have my get request where I get all my docs and we can improve that because if we send such a get request, we clearly, whoops, without the ID again, we clearly get back a response that is interesting to us. It gives us all the IDs and we know that we can take the ID and append it at the end of the URL to get data for this object then. But this is not necessarily something you know when you're a newcomer to this API. So it would be nice if we could also provide a link here, which you could then programmatically fetch to send another request to it. And maybe we also want to send some metadata, like the amount of items we fetched. So overall, I don't just want to return the docs here as a response, I want to return more. I'll get rid of the console log, which I don't really need anymore. And now I will create my response object here. You can name this whatever you want. And in this object, I want to have a count, for example. And I will simply set this equal to docs length so that I give some meta information about the amount of elements we fetched. Thereafter, I'll add a products property, which now will be an array of all the products. Now, there I'm not interested in this strange underscore underscore v thing, which seems to be some internal thing. So that is something I, I don't wanna pass along. I can make sure that I don't fetch it by adding some other method prior to exec, the select method, where I can define which fields I want to select. And you can pass a, a string here, and there you can pass name, price, and underscore ID. And this means I will fetch these fields and no other field. And this is a great way of controlling which data you actually want to fetch. So now if I attach docs here, it will be an array of docs without that strange underscore D thing. And we can see this if we just save that and send again a get request to fetch all products. Now this is our new structure. Now we don't see the count field because I'm not using my new response constant here. I should return that instead of the docs. So now if I do that again, you see now we got an object with count two products and then the products. And then as I said, would be interesting to also have more information on the individual product, like the URL that leads us to the detail information for that product. So for that, I'll actually change my docs array here I can use the normal map method for that to basically map it into a new array. There I'll get my individual document I fetched and I will return a new version of it. Now that new version will use all the old data. And for that, we could use the object spread operator if it is supported by the Node.js version you're using, but you can also map it manually to say name is doc name and price is doc price. And then underscore ID is doc underscore ID, but then also pass something like URL, which could be a JavaScript object where we, or maybe request, which could be type where we say, okay, you can send a get request. And this is just meta information. You can write this in whichever way you want, pass whichever information you want. Now, I want to pass information about which kind of request do you have to send to which URL to get more information about this object. So here it would be a GET request, which you send to a given URL that would be, and now it's the URL of our service here. So in my case, it's HTTP localhost, but of course you can also dynamically fetch this to get the ID of the service you're running on, or you can of course also hard code the domain in here, which you're going to use in the end. So I'm going to fetch my address here, localhost, 3000 to be precise. But then you would have to connect to products slash and then doc underscore ID. 
whoops, should be dot ID. Now, if I save this and I send a get request, we get back that extra information. With the URL, I can send a get request to, and I can indeed do this by simply clicking on it, where I get detailed information for that given object. So this is now how we should style this and how we should structure this. This is a better response for getting all the documents. And of course, you can fine tune this totally to your needs. Now let's have a look at the other routes. If we created a new object, right now I simply return a message, which is okay, but maybe not this message. So we could say created object or created product successfully, though that is kind of a redundant uh, message because we do have status code 201, but still let's keep it. Then created product makes sense, but I don't just want to paste in the result here. Instead, because let's maybe first have a look, because if I do send such a post request here with the body I have here without the sales price maybe, if I send this, what I get back as a response is all again with this strange V thing and so on. So what I could do is I could also simply return a new object here where I maybe manually map name to result name, price to result price and ID to result ID, but where I then also add my request object I used before where I set the type equal to get and the URL to the same URL as above to give the user an idea about where to send a subsequent request to get detailed information about that new object. The one difference is of course that here I'm not accessing doc ID but result ID. So this would now be a better response for creating products. If we have a look, this looks good. Now we get this type of response. And feel free to continue on your own, of course, to practice this. We can do the same for the other routes too. Like here, when we get data about one single object, if I do send such a get request here, we also get back that V thing. The rest actually might be fine, though you could also pass some meta information about where to send a request to get a list of all objects maybe. So that is something you can change on that get route for a single object. So on this route here, for one, I can add select here to say I only want to name the price and the ID. And then as I just mentioned, you can adjust the response here to not just give back the product, which is your document, but also that request metadata where you say, yeah, you could also send a get request to a URL and that URL would be HTTP localhost slash products to get a list of all products. And of course you could pass also some description property where you say get all products so that it's clearer what you're doing here or use some identifier like get all products that could be more machine readable. I'll remove that, but you can style this and set this up in whichever way you need it or you want it for your API. It is something you should always keep in mind though. Do create descriptive APIs if you plan on using them publicly. If it's only for you, you might not need that, but if you want to create a, an API that's used by other people, you should be clear about how to use this and you do that by using it like this. And for that, let's also do the same for patching. Here, we obviously also update and we then return the result of that operation, which isn't that meaningful. It's just this, this strange set of numbers. So there I could also just pass nothing, that's also valid, or simply pass something like an object where we have a message, product updated, and then again, our request object to know that you can send a get request to a URL to get the details about the new product. And that would be localhost slash products slash, and then the ID which we fetch from our URL here. So that would be a meaningful response for patching. So let's try this out too. If I wanna send a patch request to this URL and there I do instead indeed set a meaningful body. Well, let's do that on the first tab where I already configured this a bit better. So let's grab some ID here, which I want to patch. 
Let's turn this to a patch request. And then remember, here the body is an array where we got a couple of objects describing the operations we want to do. Like here, we would set the prop name property to let's say name, we want to change the name of a product. And then the value will be something more useful. If I now send this, I get back this updated response and I can send a get request to this of course and fail, oh, because I of course should encode the port into that URL too. So that is something I also need to do up here where I return the data for a single product ID. So this should be the full domain of course. So with that fixed, let's try this again. Let's again patch this object here and then simply send a get request. And now we get that data for this changed object. And with that for deleting, we also might do something comparable. Here we try to delete this object. And if we succeed, I can either send an empty object or again, something with a message where I say product deleted. And here I don't really need to send a link to the product because it was deleted. But we could add our request object here maybe to show, hey, you could also send a post request to some other URL. So here would be HTTP localhost 3000 products to create a new product. There you will need to send data and that data then would simply be in the form of having a name, which is a string and a price, which is a number. And with that, we would give instructions what the request body should look like. Maybe we name this body therefore. So now if we save this and we delete our object here, we get back this link which says, hey, you can send a post request to this URL. And if you pass that payload, then you will create a new product. So these are more meaningful responses and you can, as I said, fine tune them to your needs. You might need different responses, obviously. I think we spent enough time on that. Now, one thing, because just as I see it, I want to work on is this deprecation warning, which you also might have seen and which you maybe also ask about already. Now, this is not a problem. You could ignore it, but we also can fix it by going back to the app.js file. And there, when we set up Mongoose, right, when we connect it there, I can also say Mongoose promise equals global promise to use the default Node.js promise implementation instead of the mongoose one. And with that, if you restart the server, you shouldn't get this anymore. So now if you again start sending your requests and so on, it should still work as before, but you shouldn't get this deprecation warning. Now feel free to fine tune this more to adjust it to your needs and requirements. I'm happy with the current state and I'd say in the next video, we take a closer look at further evolving our data structures and also adding some orders and making sure that we save these in the database too.